You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories happening right now. And first up for us tonight, TCAP test results running into a conflict with Tennessee's new law about making the grade. Lots of youngsters around the state fell short, meaning that without some more work like summer school or tutoring next school year, they might be held back in the third grade. Now, the state education department says 60% of Tennessee students tested in the below or approaching categories for English and language arts performance. That's around four percentage points better than last year. Now, Governor Bill Lee calls the numbers historic gains, but with six and 10 of the state's third graders needing extra help to move up to the fourth grade, parents, well, they're worrying since there's not much time to make the arrangements. Now, WAT6 on your side reporter Molly O'Brien meets one parent for whom this comes as an unwelcome surprise. Students dwindled down to a test score. That's what one mother of a third grade student feels like the new law does. On Friday, parents learned how their students scored on the TCAP exam. Today, those students who scored below the proficiency line had the opportunity to retake the exam. Brandy Jenkins was shocked to learn her straight-A third grader would potentially have to repeat third grade. Jenkins, however, is not alone. I learned that at least a third of Knox County is in the same predicament and uh, half of Nashville schools are in the same predicament. Um, I have a lot of homeschool friends who their hearts are going out to us and this is just another reason they homeschool. We are told the 85 minute multiple choice exam is taken on the computer. If students receive a score of below or approaching on the retake, their family will be notified of the next steps on Friday, May 26. In Knox County, Molly O'Brien, WATE 6 on your side. Molly, thank you. Jenkins says she'll be pushing for change surrounding this law in the future. Across Knox County, 1,600 third graders did not make the cut in their English and language arts TCAPs. Meanwhile, the state education department sees evidence of success in the numbers from a new comprehensive early literacy strategy pointing out that 2023 brought the largest single year increase in students who met or exceeded expectations those being the top two score categories since standards were upped in 2017. Coming out of Nashville, reactions to these numbers show a party line divide. For example, Tennessee's House Democratic Caucus Chair John Ray Clemens putting out a statement today describing the retention law, a win for Republicans and public school opponents, pushing what he calls a, quote, false failing schools narrative. Now, Clemens going on to say, quote, they have yet again undermined our state's education system by reducing trust in public schools and placing even more emphasis on standardized tests at the expense of our students. On the other hand, Republican lawmakers shared comments of praise like this from State Senator Bo Watson saying, quote, these results demonstrate that our state's literacy strategy is working. And Governor Lee said we're encouraged that our strategic literacy investments have already resulted in historic gains across the state. Our next Big 7 story for you, the search for someone who reportedly fired a gun at a Knox County deputy. That's why you may have seen lots of deputies and the sheriff's office helicopter around North Knox County this afternoon. We we're told this started with a deputy trying to stop a pickup truck for reckless driving. This is around 11 this morning along Dry Gap Pike. The sheriff's office says the suspect dumped the truck on, the Sanf on Sanford Road and then the suspect ran off. Officers spent the afternoon searching by air, using dogs on the ground, trying to find a man said to be 30 to 40 years of age, wearing a red sleeveless shirt and a light colored ball cap. At last check, he was still out there somewhere. And if you have information that might help in the search, deputies want you to call this number, 865-215-2243. Another Big 7 just breaking this afternoon. It's a potentially huge step, a settlement and the lawsuit coming out of the cleanup at the Kingston Ash Spill site. You know, we followed this story for years and years for you, first going back to the spill itself in December of 2008 when a torrent of muddy sludge, including coal ash, poured down from storage areas around the Kingston Fossil Plant into Emory River and burying nearby properties. TVA hired Jacobs Engineering for the huge job of picking up the ash. Workers on the project have claimed that the company did not offer the right protection, causing some to get sick or even die in the years that followed. Workers and their families sued in federal court. Last year, a three-judge panel ruled that Jacobs was not immune from possibly being held liable. 
Jacob's website de dedicated to the spill response now reads, quote, in 2023, to avoid further litigation, the parties chose to enter into an agreement to resolve the cases. The terms of this settlement are confidential. Of course, we'll keep working to bring you more answers on the scope of this settlement. Moving through our big seven list for you, caregivers charged in a woman's death. All four have been arrested on charges, including first degree murder, aggravated neglect and evidence tampering. Those four arrested are Randy Shinpaw, Ira Shinpaw, Teresa Shinpaw and Crystal Shinpaw Dalton, all listed as caregivers. According to court documents, the charges stem from the 2020 death of Brenda Crutchfield. Dalton also faces an additional charge of financial exploitation, accused of knowingly financially exploiting Crutchfield, stealing more than $60,000 from her. This alleged exploitation began as early as July of 2017. Of course, we'll make sure to follow this case closely as more information is released. Next in our Big 7 list for you, a former UT cheerleader and local youth cheerleading coach arrested. He was first named in connection with a lawsuit that we reported last year filed against a major player in the youth cheerleading industry. Now Dominic Frizzell has been indicted on nine counts of solicitation of a minor, sexual activity involving a minor, especially aggravated exploitation of a minor, and one count of statutory rape. You may remember we learned last fall that Frizzell had worked as a coach at Premier Athletics. The suit claimed he was allowed to emotionally, physically, and sexually exploit young athletes, claiming Frizzell solicited two alleged victims for sex and sent them sexually explicit photos. We reached out to Frizzell's attorney, Don Bosch, for a response. Bosch telling us tonight his firm just learned of the charges over the weekend. Moving along now in our big stories list for you tonight, a home scorched this morning in Knoxville. Knoxville fire crews say a person passing by spotted the fire and called 911. KFD finding the fire on Glider Avenue. This is near Mitchell Street with smoke coming from the eaves of the home. The fire was put out fairly quickly. People living there were not home at the time, but showed up while fire crews were still on scene. KFD says the residents are getting help from the Red Cross tonight. Investigators do not yet know how the fire started. And wrapping up our big seven and seven list for you tonight, the housing market on the national level is starting to improve, but local experts say Knoxville is not following suit. The Knoxville Area Association of Realtors just released its 2023 state of housing report, and it shows demand is still high and affordability is incredibly low. The report looks at supply and demand, population trends and economic conditions in East Tennessee and how that is impacting the housing market in the area. So let's look at the positives first. Knoxville is currently seeing record equity levels and home price growth is finally starting to slow down a bit. But Knoxville is becoming increasingly more popular and with more people moving to our region. That's a good thing for the economy, but not for housing prices. Knoxville isn't a secret anymore. People are wanting to move here at rates that we've really never seen before. And it has provoked one of the largest price um, increases in, in home prices over the past three years that we've ever seen in Knoxville. Um, and unfortunately, that's led housing affordability to fall to the lowest level since at least the 1980s. Um, so it is a really hard time to purchase a home, particularly for local Knoxvillians um, across the regions. Yeah, the report shows that prices and inventory will likely remain the same this year, which should cause sales to slow. We should note the rental market is also still facing some problems. The cost to rent is forecasted to go up around 4% in the next year.